In this video, I would like to discuss a mathematical tool that um, I think you're already familiar with, but you might not know you're familiar with, and you may not have studied explicitly, but it's going to be useful in the physics that we're about to do. So um, what I want to talk about is something called weighted averages. So let's start by talking about ordinary averages. So for just a normal average, the way that we would calculate that for a set of numbers, let's say we had three, seven, and eight. Well, the average is just the total, um, which is going to be three plus seven plus eight, divided by the number of entries. So I'm going to write that in sort of a peculiar way, but I think by the end you'll see why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to divide that by one plus one plus one. Okay, so if you do that, um, what you'll get is 18 divided by three, so you'll get six for this average. Okay, and we're all familiar with that. That's something that you've done uh, a lot of times before. Um, but we can also do what's called a weighted average. So a weighted average is a little different. Um, and so um, I think the most familiar example of a weighted average is in calculating grades. So you might, for instance, look at a syllabus for some class, and maybe for that class, 50% of your grade is determined by the exams, and 25% is determined by the homework, and then maybe there's a 25% that is determined by the labs, something like this. Okay, so you go to calculate your grade and you say, okay, well, I know that for my exams, I have an 80 average. For my homework, maybe I have a 70 average. And for labs, grade in the lab, I have a 95 average. Well, how do you go about calculating your weighted average for the grade? Well, what you do in that case is you say, all right, I'm going to take each of the numbers. I'm going to take 80, but I'm not just going to take 80 plus 70 plus 95 because I know the exams count extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 80 by some weight. So 0 0.5 in this case, because it's 50% of the grade. And then I'm going to take the um, 70 that I have for homeworks, and I'm going to multiply that by 0.25. Um, that is the weighting for that. And then plus the 95 that I have for labs, and multiplying that by the um, 0.25 that I have for that. Okay. Um, and then I divide by um, 1 in this case, but the way that I'm going to write that is 0 0.5. So that first weighting plus 0 0.25, the second weighting plus 0 0.25 for that third weighting. Okay. And so if you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get um, 81.3. Um, which might have been a surprise if you just um, do the average without weighting it, you would get something like 82 and a half. Um, but because the 95 counts for less than the 80, um, it doesn't quite end up where you would have expected. Okay, so um, this is a fairly familiar kind of weighted average. Um, the weightings all add up to one in this case, but they don't have to. So another um, kind of interesting example we can do with the weighted average is, for instance, voting. Um, and this is particularly relevant when you're watching um, like election results come in and people will show a map of the election results. So let's say that there is some particular measure that people were voting on. And maybe there are three different counties in a state that we're going to consider. Okay, so maybe in one county, you got 60% of people voted yes. And maybe in another county, you had 20% of people voting yes. And in a third county, maybe you have 25% of people voting yes. Okay, so looking at this, you would think that this um, resolution failed because clearly you have 60% in one place, but 20 and 25 in two other places, so clearly they didn't get over 50%. But the thing that um, we're leaving out here is how many people are in each of these counties, right? So maybe there's a city in this um, upper county, so we have um, a lot of people in this one. This is just going to be kind of a placeholder. So let's say there's 200 people in that one, um, whereas these other two counties are much smaller, and maybe this one only has 30 people, and this one only has 20 people. Well, now if you calculate a weighted average, what we're going to do is say, all right, well, I'm going to take the um, percents, but I'm going to weight them by which, um, or by how many people are voting in each county. So for instance, if I take the 60%, and I'm going to weight that by 200, and then I'm going to add to that 20%, which I'm going to weight by the 30 people who live in that second county. And then finally, I'm going to take 25%, and I'm going to weight that by the 20 people who live in that third county. And then I'm going to divide that by the total amount of weighting. So I'm going to divide that by the 200 people, plus the 30 people, plus the 20 people. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm actually in the top counting up how many people voted yes. So 60% of 200 people voted yes, 20% of the 30 people voted yes, and 25% of the 20 people voted yes. And when I do that, I actually get 52.4%. Okay, so even though it didn't seem like this resolution passed, most of the people voted for it. And it um, was just because most of the people were in that big county that it looked like it wasn't going to. You know, this might be a map where you have um, a huge region where um, it looks like people are voting no and a tiny region where people vote yes, but it still comes out to be a yes because there were way more people in that small region. Okay, so this is a weighted average. These are a couple different examples of that. So um, generally speaking, the formula for a weighted average um, is the following. So the average is going to just be um, the sum of each of the values, so each value xi, um, but multiplied by the weighting. So um, I'm going to put a weight for each value. Some of the um, values might count more than others. So this might be the exam counting for more of the grade. This might be more people living in one of the counties, etc. But that's not enough because the weightings might be arbitrary. And so then at the end, we end up dividing by the um, weightings. So I just add up all the weights, um, and that gives me my weighted average at the end. Um, okay, so now going back to some of the earlier examples I did, what's going on in sort of the ordinary average? Well, in an ordinary average, the weights are all equal, so I just use one for each of those. So um, up here I had three um, with a weighting of one, seven with a weighting of one, and eight with a weighting of one. And so that's why I wrote it down like this. All right, so um, 
In the next uh, video, we're going to see how weighted averages apply to a particular um, thing that we want to study in physics.